Section 42 of The Soul, or Rational Psychology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lauren White, Bellingham, Washington. The Soul, or Rational Psychology, by Emanuel Swedenborg. Translated by Frank Sewall, 1837 to 1915, and others. Section 42. Part 4. Immortality. Chapter 26. Concerning Death. 486. We have shown above what the body is and what is its form, or that the body consists of forms inferior by orderly and successive degrees, to the soul which is the spiritual form. Thus the body consists of purer and grosser parts. The form of the soul is spiritual, that of the intellectory is celestial, that of the internal sensory is vortical, that of the external sensory or the brain is spiral, and that of the appendix itself, which is properly called the body, is circular. Its bones, cartilages, and similar parts are of the angular form. Likewise, the many elements which enter into the blood and constitute it, in every globule of which every form is concealed, from the first one to the last. 487. These forms are so connected that one holds the other most closely so that they appear like one entity, even though they be most distinct. Thus the soul is said to descend from its heaven into the world when it brings itself into such forms and shapes its organs out of itself and its own substance, whose forms at length are corporeal and material. The cause of this is that the soul may be able to engage in the functions of this lowest world and operate in a manner conformable to its forces. Since if it did not put on a corporeal form, since if it did not put on a corporeal form, it would never be able to walk upon the earth, to lift weights, to cultivate the soil, to procreate offspring, and to form a terrestrial society, but can only live in some sublunary region. Wherefore the body is formed, with a regard to the performing of these functions, and thus otherwise in man than in the quadrupeds, reptiles, birds, and fishes. All are formed according to their nature to which are adapted the gifts which each shall exercise. 488. The destruction of these ultimate forms is called dying, and the lowest are those first destroyed, and then in order the purer and the higher, even up to the soul or the spiritual form, which cannot be destroyed. First the angular form is destroyed, or their connection is severed, and the angular bodies which are in the blood and in the humors are dissipated. Wherefore, so slight a portion of the blood is seen remaining in the dead. Afterward, the circular form, or the form of the several viscera, is destroyed, and also the outward form of the body, which collapses, then the brain, or the spiral form, and so the remaining ones in their order. 489. Anything is said to die, or to be destroyed, when that which is proper to its form perishes or is dissolved. Thus the situation, and the connection of the parts, their order and thence their state, are the peculiar property of a thing, and besides these there is nothing which is proper to any form, and when these are dissolved, then the form perishes or dies, and then all that affection to which was adapted to it passes away. Thus the soul is no longer able to perceive those things which agree with itself, namely, the modifications and affections of the ultimate world and its harmonies, or sensations and the like impressions, nor to perform the other bodily functions, for every muscle is destroyed, and although each motor fiber may remain, still the property of the muscle is such parishes, for the situation, connection, order, and state of its motor fibers are destroyed. The motor fibers may be dissolved and die, and still the nervous fibers which compose them remain. On the dissolution and perishing of the nervous fibers, the simple fibers remain, and so on. So also in the other viscera, and even in the organs. For as these were successively formed, so are they successively dissolved. 
or as they are born into life, so do they perish, or are born out of life. Danaskantur. The lowest forms, because they are changeable, inconstant, imperfect, and their determinations less harmonious, are always the first to die, and so in order up to the foremost. The triangular form perishes before the circular, the circular before the spiral, for there is always something of the perpetual added or something of the finite and inconstant taken away as the form ascends. This is the reason why the dissolution of forms and hence of the body, which consists of forms of this kind, takes place in this order. 490. Hence it follows that more time is required for the dissolution of any higher form than of a lower, and more for that of a circular than for that of an angular form. Thus death proceeds from the external to the internal man, and the more slowly is the progress is more to the interiors. 491. But let us take the blood as an example. A globule of this consists of all the forms even to the first spiritual. The red blood is first dissolved, and the angular elements are dissipated, which effect takes place immediately. Next the pure blood then remaining is dissolved but after a considerable lapse of time. Then remains that which is properly called the animal spirit, or its individual part. This is not readily dissolved, because it is a celestial form. After this remains the soul, purified from all that is earthly. 492. Thus by death, that is given back to the earth which was taken from the earth, as whatever was in the blood and its humors, and to the air, what was likewise taken from it, as also to the ether. That remains which is purely animal, and the animal property, namely the soul, anima, which is alone what lives and lives in the body according to its organic forms. Thence all that life dies which belongs to that organism, that is, the external, ultimate, lowest, and inferior life of the soul. Therefore dissolution is predicated of the organism, and death of the life of that organism. 493. The question arises, therefore, what lives die, or what organic connections are dissolved? For there are as many degrees of life as there are degrees of organs. The life of the tongue is different from that of hearing, that of the ear different from that of the eye, and that of the eye from that of the internal sensory, which is called perception. The life of the sensory is, further, different from that of the intellectory, and that of the intellectory from that of the soul, which is spiritual, and is all in the remaining lives in which it lives according to form and by forms. The forms themselves are called organic, and they are the substances themselves whose affections are called sensations. 494. In order, therefore, that we may know what forms are dissolved or what lives die, this is sufficiently beyond question, that the common life of the body dies, or that the general nexus of all its parts is dissolved. Likewise, the external sensory organs, touch, taste, smell, hearing, sight, with organs of each, as also the internal sensory, with the intellect and the rational mind, that is, the cortical glands, with the changes of their states. For there was no such intellect in the embryo, hardly any in the infant, it has increased with age, is completed in the adult, then decreases in old age, is enfeebled and suffers in disease, and therefore also dies with the body. This intellect indeed has been acquired, to the end that the soul by means of it might perceive what goes on outside of itself, and indeed through the senses, and also that it might perform those functions which are to be exercised in this lowest world. When the soul no longer lives in this ultimate world, nor wishes longer to perceive what is going on here in these lowest spheres, nor what requires to be done in the earth and in a terrestrial society, then with the necessity and the use the faculty itself perishes, and also the organ predestined to this use. Oh, how miserable should we be if after death we lived in a rational mind with our imperfect intellect with our inconstant will governed by so many changing states and desires, and we ourselves partly spiritual and partly animal. Such a mind can equally be changed, 
and after its intervals die in the future as in the present life, for it would not have changed its nature. Therefore a rational mind with its desires and affections, and our intellect with its principles, opinions, and reasonings die and do not survive their body. 495. As for the pure intellectory to which belongs the pure natural mind, this indeed also seems to die or to be dissolved, but after the longest delay, for it is a celestial form, and there are no forms present which can destroy it. But how long this continues, it is not in our power to say. As, for instance, how this mind or animus can survive a long time after death and not be able to operate as its common or external form is dissolved, and it is yet unable to acquire it to itself a new form. But this let us dismiss as something wholly unknown, whether, for instance, the human animus may survive the life of the body even to the last judgment, when its parts are to be resolved into their principles by a most pure elementary fire. Into these mysteries, however, let us not penetrate. 496. But it is asked, why must the body be dissolved or the corporeal life extinguished? The reason why this is ordained of the divine providence is very evident if we regard the end of creation, that namely, there be a, a universal society of souls which shall constitute heaven, and which would be impossible without a seminary upon the earth, and without the death of those dwelling therein, and thus a perpetual succession, as also in order that souls may be formed in their bodies and reformed into the eternal state. What is earthly and corporeal cannot be perpetual, because it is changeable in itself, inconstant, imperfect, and always decreasing. Death is therefore inseparable from the corporeal life, especially since it is subject to the will of the rational mind, which always takes away the corporeal life. He semper alfert vitam corporeum. 497. Beside this, the soul never would be able without death to be left to its own right and free will according to its nature of living, for it is interwoven in the body, or is the form of its own body, and so bound into it that it cannot act otherwise than according to the ability of those forms which it has attained. Thus it is most limited, and nothing is left to it but to wish and desire other conditions. In order, therefore, that the soul may be left to itself, it is necessary that its ultimate form be dissolved. Even the soul itself desires often to be dissolved, especially when the loves of the animus have driven out the pure loves, and the soul lives, as it were, subjugated to the body. Then the soul itself conspires for the dissolution of the body, and indeed by those accidents which often befall us unawares and are the causes of diseases and of death. But concerning these points more will be said elsewhere. These subjects, however, and that of death itself, must be treated distinctly and in their several divisions, that they may the better cohere. End of section 42. Recording by Lauren White. Bellingham, Washington.